Because I'm Bishop Larry H. Jordan Sr. And welcome to Moving People in the Right Direction. This morning we will continue the topic, Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. Not only do I want to speak to my uh, local assembly, my church, the Believer's Worship Center, but I want to speak to those that are watching us through social media as well to understand that the times we live in, we must walk by faith. Amen. I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 it says in him you trusted after you heard the word of of truth let me read that again in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise after we heard the word we trusted in it and after we trusted in the word we believe that is the gospel of our salvation and after we received it as the gospel of our salvation we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and it is important that we understand that we are sealed with the most powerful being on the face of the earth called the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus promised at the church that would become Jerusalem. He told his disciples and those that were with them in the upper room, he said, wait there until you receive the promise. I wouldn't even attempt to do anything in life, and especially preaching the gospel, unless I have the spirit of promise. Verse 14, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now, after you heard the word of God, you trusted in Jesus Christ, his word and his gospel, we trusted for salvation. We have salvation. And everyone that has received the gospel has received the power of salvation. Now you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, meaning that there are things that you can do beyond human nature. We have been baptized into the nature of the Holy One that we recognize as our Savior who is responsible for redeeming us. His name is Jesus Christ. That promise gave you an inheritance to the kingdom of God. So now that we're in this body, we have already been redeemed because we are no longer sinners. But we also, but we also are prepared now to be redeemed to enter into the kingdom of heaven. So to do that, we must walk by faith. 2 Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 5 through 9. But also, before I read the scripture, Christians definitely need to understand this is a very serious instruction to you. And those that do it will improve. But those that don't do it, something else takes place. You become barren. So let's see what the word of God has to say to us. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness. Verse number seven, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Now, 
when I read the scripture, I thank God every day. And I'm quite sure you do, but at times we have to go back and read and thank him for the things that we are obeying based upon what the promise, the Holy Spirit, leads us to remember. One of the major problems in church today is that Christians don't add to their faith. I hear so many messages about faith. You know, faith for wealth, faith to get through this. I have faith, I have faith, I have faith. Uh, I was actually dealing with a pastor where I said that I preach beyond just a message of having faith. I have faith. I had faith the day that I became a born again Christian. When we read the scripture over in the, the book of Romans chapter 12, it tells us that God has given each man a measure of faith. And then Jesus made it clear. He says, listen, if you just had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, you can say to your problems, you can say to your health, I will remove you and cast you into the sea. When I say your health, I'm talking about sicknesses and diseases. We don't necessarily have to give in to them things, those things, even though they are there. When we give in to them, that means we decline. And when we decline, we're, we're not doing anything for the kingdom of God, but just sulking with the mentality of this is what I'm going through in my body. Therefore, we have to position ourselves to add excellence. Those are two key words, excellence and knowledge. At times, Christians stop adding excellence to their spirit and their soul and their body. Uh, three things that the Lord says, love me with all of your heart, all of your mind, soul, and body. Three parts has to be come excellent in the sight of God. Christians walk by sight when they do not add to their faith. When you do not add to your faith, how can you walk by faith? So I just don't believe God for a house or for a car, or for some clothes or for some food. I believe God that my spirit man can improve. I, I want my mentality to believe that all things are possible with God. Therefore, this proves my energy. I become energetic when I say, Lord, by faith, I believe I can operate in excellence. I'm beyond the material thing. My house is clean. My, the dishes are washed. You know, there's food in the icebox. There's good cooking and good food. I'm beyond all of that. I'm beyond riding down the street in a car of my choice or, 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 or whatever, you know. Uh, I'm beyond that. No, where is my soul and where is my spirit? And I hear so many preachers, especially with the prosperity message, they will accumulate faith to what they have, what they drive in, what they live in. And those things we cannot take to heaven. But God requires your soul and he requires your spirit. And then he wants you to, 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 to focus on your body because you are responsible to pull things down from the mind, but also to keep the body under. That, that, that's your responsibility. That, that's the area of excellence to become powerful in the things of God. When people walk by sight, they become unfruitful in the knowledge of God, short-sighted, blind, and forgot they were cleansed from their sins. And this is the reason why, yes, old sins. This is the reason why we find difficulty in building the work of the ministry. Because people don't believe the Holy Spirit can perfect the way you think, can perfect your heart, that you will walk in brotherly love with each other. That's spiritual. To love your enemies 
and Jesus requires you to love your enemies and then we can't do it, then you are not a person of virtue. You're walking in the old nature of how you will take things out on people because of what they said, what they did, or how they lied on you. All of these things means that knowledge has become barren to what the Holy Spirit says. God will promote you and move forward through you if you walk by faith. So walking by faith to me at this time of my salvation is not in the materialistic possessions. It's in the spiritual fortification of my mind. My mind is fortified. It, it has become a fort to, 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 to protect me from thinking wrong. A fort protects people. So I make sure that my mentality is going to be in the right place to serve you. How can I serve you as a pastor and then I'm different when I'm out in the street or in the world? No, excellence has to always be a virtue of the spirit at all times in building the kingdom of God. That's why the scripture says after you heard the word, you trust it. You trusted Jesus Christ, his word, and his gospel for salvation. And now you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always lead you in a conduct to be righteous. To add to your faith is to be righteous. We have problems and other churches has, have problems all across this country and the world because people won't add virtue and knowledge. They won't add it. So now they don't know how to build. They don't know how to walk. They give up. You know, they, 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 they always make excuses not to work. You know, I want to say this. Um, of course, uh, uh, Pastor Delphine is, is always in a position to serve. She's my wife. You know, she, she's always in a position to serve, to grow. We consistently talk uh, about the doctrine of Christ and, and things pertaining to the spirit of God, wanting to feel the power and the authority of God through us for this congregation. But also, I am blessed. I am blessed, and I want to recognize I am blessed that I have a system pastor that doesn't give up. Every time that he's called upon, excellence comes out of him and I know at times he's probably tired but when I can't do certain things I know that I have a teacher that can stand up and break the word down where a child can understand it that virtue is called perseverance that virtue is called leadership that vir virtue is also called diligence. And most of the times we have to present that virtue when we are tired, when we are going through in our bodies. Do you read and do you believe what Jesus has gone through? I mean, just think about it. The Lord and, and his subjects, well, I would say his disciples, they will actually walk to different areas of the country. You have a car to drive, and you still complain. Jesus and them will walk miles, and it will make maybe two days for them to get to the destination that they were going to. Sometimes they would get on a boat and cross the river, the Galilee or whatever. Um, but you have a car. It's, it's, it's not far with a car that has comfortable seats in it. When it's cold, you have heat. When it's hot, you have air condition, and, and you still won't perfect yourself to do things for ministry according to that blessing that you receive from God. It, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. I'm tired. I don't think I'm going to go here. No, Bishop, no, I'm, not, I'm not coming to church today because of this or because of that. Uh, you know, and, 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 and there, there are reasons and excuses for some things, but then some things you know and God knows where you are. Listen to this. Let's go to book of Hebrews real quick. Book of Hebrews. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter 4. And I'm going to go to verse number 13. Verse 13. It says, 
and there is no creature hidden from his sight. But all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Now, by faith, I believe that for my future. I am naked and open before God. You are too. All of your problems, all of your desires, all of your focus in life, everything that you say and you do is open before God. He sees everything. So if he sees everything, why not obey his word that you're going to perfect yourself by adding to your faith? That's the problem with the church is that people refuse to add to their faith. Let me go back to 2 Peter because I want you to see a few things that is a major problem in Christianity. Because after he's telling you to add to your faith, there are other things that he's asking you to do. He tells you to use self-control. We see that that's something that is not added also to our faith. But we say we have faith. I'm just going to use something domestic. At times, husband and wife you're not going to agree on everything about life. But one thing you can agree on, the word of God. What does the word of God say to bring liberty and freedom in a discussion? So when we don't add excellence and knowledge to our faith, we lose self-control. Knowledge tells me how to love and use words that's going to benefit spiritual growth. Man, my wife is an excellent cook. She's an excellent mother, excellent grandmother, excellent provider. She's so good, man, that my daughter count on her. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But even sometimes a father say, daughter, she got to stay home sometimes. And because the daughter is full of the Holy Spirit, she understands that that's not an attack. But it's an understanding that mama needs some rest. The unique thing about their closeness is that they don't argue. They understand. My wife and I have gotten beyond what we call fallout arguments yeah. some folk would say well for 53 years you should have been not necessarily true I have to keep growing and I have to remember what I have added to my faith that protects me and that protects her that moves us in the right direction uh, uh, I'm not a stupid man of God I am a smart man of God. I'm a man of God that's going to look at the scriptures and say, if I'm going to have peace, not only in my home, but in my family, then I have to know what brotherly kindness is all about. God is kind. It's a manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. God is kind. That house, that's already in me. So if I don't add it in my personality, if I don't add it in my mentality, I will fail God. We always look, well, Lord, I want to see the power and I want to see the healing and the miracles of God. And your inward man really don't even understand what is required for that to happen. We have to know how that is supposed to happen. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. And this is where not only uh, the Believer's Worship Center but every church that is planning a harvest should know that in order for a harvest to come, you must add, I mean, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 9, you have to add that. Because what I'm about to express through scripture, believe me, 
If we don't add that to our faith, what the scripture says in 2 Peter chapter 1, 5 through 9, then we will be walking by sight and not by faith for the most important thing that Jesus is looking for us to do at a church. Our time has arrived even where we are as a church right now. When I consistently see inconsistency in people, even at times when they want to line up and do things outside of what the ministry has already organized as a vision that God has given to bring forth for the people that lacks the kingdom of heaven. So you have people that want to walk in their own ways. Well, you know, uh, uh, even though I'm a part of this church, you know, uh, I'm going to do this on my own because this is what the Lord, you're saying, this is what the Lord has led me to do. And we, we find that at times uh, people would do that because they're insecure. When you're insecure and don't want to line up, of what the leadership of the church is trying to bring to the community and you are a member of the church but you're trying to do your own thing then you need to move on seriously because you're not lining up with what Jesus said he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches God has already lined up and given us the understanding as to what goes wrong and what goes right in a church. Now, you're not going to always read that, but the preacher will. Just like I was talking about the church of Sardis this morning. There were people in there that were actually dead in the church. And Jesus is saying, you have to repent because you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that's something you in a church and you're dead spiritually and Jesus says, because of that, I will blot your name out of the book of life for being a dead Christian. And that comes because you don't read what the scripture says again in 2 Peter chapter 1, 5 through 9. You become barren. You're blind. You're short-sighted. You, you forgot that you were uh, forgiven of your old sins. Now you're back in your same old nature and you're dead wanting to do something in the church, but you can't do anything in the church because you have given yourself over to the mentality of how Satan used people in the world. Being a Christian is growing as a Christian. Being a Christian means that faith has to move according to the plan and the will of God. The Lord called 70 disciples. He called them. And we're going to see this in a minute in scripture. He called them and he gave them power to go out into the community to do the will of God. Now, in order for that to happen, that means that they collectively, that 70 was at times at the feet of Jesus. They were at his teachings. They, they were spending time with him with the other 12. He recognized the grace that was on their life. So now he's sending them out and he's sending them out because he sees a harvest. You all have to see a harvest. Pastors that has congregations, you have to teach your congregation that they must add to their faith in order for them to bring in a harvest. You can't bring in a harvest if you don't add to your faith. You just can't walk up and say, I have faith, I can do anything. No, the scriptures tells you you have to add to it. If you don't add to it, you're not going to help the church. Sinners have faith and live unrighteously. Sinners have faith and not going to heaven. Look at Elon, Elon Musk. This man is producing all these cars. He's a electric cars. He's the richest man in the world. The thing about it, God is not leading his life. The devil is. But he has faith that he can make electric cars. 
Well, Bishop, you're judging him. I'm not judging him. I'm telling you that his fruit, his fruit shows who he is. His mentality shows that he's off. You know, the devil can also move you in his right direction and make you popular because he is the prince of this world. Satan can give you ideas and they work. You can ask Adam and Eve about that. There was a great king, before I get into this about the harvest, there was a great king that conquered Jerusalem and Judea back in the days of Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, the three Hebrew boys. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was a, was a great architect. Not only was he a great architect, he was a great mind for winning wars. His empire controlled the world. But one day, and, 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 and uh, Babylon was a great wonder of the world. Even when those Hebrew boys, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, the Hebrew boys, and the three Hebrew boys, and, and the other captives that was taken from Israel. They, they called them the, the fair-minded uh, 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 Israelites that they were taken into the kingdom of Babylon. And as they were, I could just see the amazement. They say, wow, look, we never seen a kingdom in, in a palace built like this. You know, we never seen a, a garden with waterfalls and all of these things are uh, are coming. I'm, I'm, I mean, the, the archaeology was just amazing. And, you know, that wasn't in a time where uh, you had machines to make things. This is on a, the backs of, 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 of laborers, you know, to, to, to bring all of this to pass. But this man was, this king was awesome. He knew how, how to build a nation. How, how, how to, to be an architect to construct something that people never seen before. And today we talk about Babylon, even in the scriptures. We, talk, we hear about how great and beautiful Babylon was. But one day, this king decided that he wanted to build an uh, uh, image of himself and he wanted everybody to bow down and worship him. What I'm saying this king had faith to do all of this, but he was doing all of this without God. Without God. One day he looked at his splendor and he said, look what I have done. God was irritated. And he says, oh, you think you're so mighty and you think that you're so great. Well, guess what? You're going to be on your knees eating grass in the dew of the morning for seven years. You will be eating grass like animals until you recognize that I am the God that sits on high. I build men. I give men knowledge and I give men wisdom. It rains on the just as well as the unjust. I am the blesser of heaven and earth. Nebuchadnezzar was condemned seven years to eat grass. Why am I saying this? Because nothing is above what Jesus said. All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. That is a whole nother subject. But I put that out there because I want you to see as we walk by faith and as this country goes down and as certain things has to happen, this president may think that he's almighty. Or should I say this elected president may think that he's almighty. Oh, but the eating of grass is coming. When you exalt yourself against God and doesn't recognize him, he will judge. And even though we may be in the midst of seeing some terrible things, 
the church will prevail because hell cannot prevail against the church. It is written. It is a promise. So live in the righteousness of God and see how God will exalt you as a result of you being a part of his body called the church in the earth. Now let's look at the read of the scripture. Luke chapter 10 verse 1. It says, after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his his, his, his harvest. His harvest. The Lord has on my heart as the pastor of the Believers Worship Center that he wants us to have laborers prepared. And you must understand that there are key things that I am doing to make sure that my elders and ministers to serve you are going to add to their faith or have already added to their faith. And those that are weak, I will make sure that they're going to add to their faith because they're going to help me to get you inspired about the harvest that is in our area. Don't be afraid to change. Listen to this. Don't be a synthetic, artificial, fake imitation Christian in the church. Don't duplicate the lifestyle of what you see in the world in worldly Christians. Live on the narrow path to enter the kingdom of God. Live to enter the promise of heaven. That's all God is asking you to do. Live to enter heaven. Now, my objective is this. If the Lord is saying we have a harvest, how many of you believe that we have a harvest? It's time for you to start believing that God can heal people. I'm saying this not only to this church, but everywhere. God can heal people. God can save people. God can give undernourished Christians nourishment to grow in the knowledge of God. All of that is part of a harvest and all of that is part of what a foundation of a church is supposed to do. You're supposed to understand that Jesus is building a ministry to bring in a harvest. It's not about the image of us. It's about the image of Christ that has to be portrayed in the eyes and the heart of people. It's, it's not about building a music program that everybody is going to talk about how fleshly and how great it is singing worldly music or acting like the world. God is, is not calling us to, to build ministers on the foundation to preach according to their personality and their charisma. We must add to our faith, you must come alive and you must not live to be dead in a church and not receive the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says, if you are dead and don't repent, he's taking your name out of the book of life. Read about the, the church of Sardis in the book of Revelation. He that has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. <clears throat> As a church, we are chosen for a great harvest at our church location. As a church, I said this, I'm repeating it again. As a church, we can get people saved, Christians renewed, as we continue to add to our faith. You must add to your faith. The divine power of God is present in our church. I want to pause here for a minute because that is so true. The presence of God is here. And if you don't believe that, then you need to listen to how I preach the gospel, 
how I build your most holy faith, how I push you to get out of self-grandizement and to get more involved in the Holy Spirit. This is a practice in this church. I am serious about my members entering the kingdom of heaven. I believe what the Lord said when he said every idle word that comes out of your mouth that I have to stand and you have to stand before him in the day of judgment. And see, we keep looking beyond that. Your future has already started. How many times do I have to remind you that our time is not like God's time? Jesus has been gone over 2,000 years. <coughs> and still, he's coming back for the church. So he warns us. He warns us not to live and work like it is nighttime. But to live and work always like it is daytime. And you still have Christians that won't perfect that in their mentality because they think that they can escape sin by just I'll wait and I'll wait and I'll wait and I'll wait. He doesn't know if to do good and do if not. The Bible says it is a sin. Please listen to this. The Holy Spirit is ready to release God's power and I feel this in my spirit of healings, miracles, and love if we walk by faith. I went over the scripture about the man that had a son that had a mute spirit. And the father said, I took him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Jesus said, bring him to me. The man says, Jesus said, well, what's wrong with him? He says, well, this, this mute, this mute. Now notice now, he's, he's, he's letting us know that the mute spirit is a demon. He says, this mute spirit throws him into the fire. And, and this mute spirit throws him into the water trying to drown him. Uh, the, the devil is trying to kill him. Jesus says, bring him to me. When he cast the spirit out of the man, he says to his disciples, how long shall I be with you? He was agitated. You've been with me. I've taught you. And, and, and you still at this point are not listening to what I'm saying to overcome the devil and to bring victory in a community. The whole community was watching this. He was speaking to a whole community while he was delivering this young boy who had a mute spirit. But this was his directive to his disciples and this is my directive from the Lord, not only to myself, but to every elder and every minister that's going to participate, especially in the outreach ministry. He says these only come out by fasting and praying. That's the only way that we're going to deal with people that are dirty, that are stinky, that are poor, have no food, lives in a shelter, has no water to wash themselves, go in trash cans to eat. Here we are, full of the Holy Spirit, but afraid to obey God that these only come out by fasting and praying. So now, what has been directed to me is that you need to start positioning yourself that you're going to fast before God for the problems and the inconsistencies that not only you face within yourself, but also that your family face. We are supposed to have power over the devil. We're supposed to have power over the devil. Listen to this. 
The devil cannot hurt us. He cannot hurt us at all when we obey God. I will confess this. I am one that definitely likes to eat when I'm hungry. But the Lord has been dealing with me. In order for great things to come out of you and you're adding to your faith, I'm giving you a spiritual diet. It's called fasting more, something that I used to always do. Fasting more during the course of the month than just guiding myself to enjoy my appetite. As I read verses 10, 17 through 20, I want you to listen to this. We're still in the same chapter of Luke, verse 17 through 20. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I wonder why. Because those brothers were fasting and praying. You can't do that. And I want to say this to all of you all and to anybody that's in an outreach ministry. You need to give yourself over in preparation. You just can't say that I have faith and take on a demon. Your lifestyle has to be in place that you have power. And God has given you the authority, like he's given this 70, to go out and to work in the community because you're going to face a difficult task. I don't care how much the blood of Jesus is on you. I don't care how much you have been saved and how long you have been saved. There is a requirement how you have to be prepared to deal with demons. Jesus said this demon can only come out by fasting and praying. So now we must add to our faith again knowledge and excellence. Listen to this. Verse number 17, Luke 10 and 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is a promise. You know, we can't fear when we go out to perform ministry in desert places. And what I mean by that, when we go into a dry desert place, that means that there's no life there. You have to look at souls of people that when there is no life there, it is because of the devil. And now God is sending us to bring life there. But he wants us to know the devil can't hurt you if you're full of my power. Listen to this. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. It is our time to rejoice that demons are subject to you. To the name of Jesus. Church, I'm saying it's time for us to start rejoicing that demons, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a directive here. It's time for you to start rejoicing that demons are subject to the name of Jesus. Whenever you see what you prayed for come to pass and you know that Satan has had his wicked, evil hands on it, start giving God the praise and start rejoicing that his name, his blood covered the situation. Listen to this. We have authority given to us by Jesus Christ to trample on demon spirits and all the power of the devil. We as a church can do this. We can do this. So when the directive come out to the church membership, we're going to fast 
and we're going to pray whatever God says needs to take place to trample on the devil, then collectively we all have to come together to obey this command in order for the miracle to take place and expect it to take place because you obey God at his command. Let me go further as I bring this to a close. The devil cannot hurt us when we walk by faith and believe in the power of God. Believe that our security is in Christ and your names are written in heaven. Live to keep it there. I just ran out of time. We're moving people in the right direction. I thank God for every opportunity to preach from the power of the Bible. Thank you for watching and we appreciate your continued support. If you would like to make a donation or pay your tithes and offering, please go to tbwc.org slash give. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. online or on Facebook. It is our pleasure to introduce our new online Christian education program, the Believer's Bible Institute. Registration is now open for individuals interested in furthering their knowledge of the Word of God. Please visit bbitbwc.com for more information and to view our current course offerings. Jesus said, come unto me. Join us for prayer every Friday at 7 p.m. You can submit a prayer request by emailing us at prayer at tbwc.org.